Hello, fifth grade. We're on domain nine, chemical matter, lesson 10, to catch a thief. Our objectives are to identify text evidence using, used by the characters to support their claims. We're going to use our understanding of chemical changes to explain Amy's plan to the sheriff, and we're going to understand how to use commas and a range of contexts and the roots mit and miss. Our key vocabulary. Ramble is to walk without any obvious purpose. Boundaries are the limits of an area. Cells are the basic building blocks of living things. Tarnishing is a process by which some metals become dull. Spangled is covered with small, shiny objects. Sliver is thin, narrowing, narrow piece. A hunch is a guess based on feeling, not facts. And irritation is a state of feeling annoyed. This is our independent reading for today. Today we're going to look at the use of commas in two other contexts to set off words yes and no or to set off a tag of question. So for setting off the yes or no, yes, I do think I want to be a paleontologist. No, thank you. I don't want another snack. Yes, I think I will solve this case. No, I'm not afraid of dinosaurs. Adding that comma breaks off that set off point. Now when we're doing tag, que tag questions, remember that tag question is kind of like the end point of the sentence. Um, it's a question that's added to the end. You think I'm the culprit, don't you? Notice how that sets off that question. It's the leading off into it. It's very hot, isn't it? There are no footprints or tracks, are there? Paleontology is fun, don't you think? Those are that tag question, and that part is setting those pieces up. The root mit or miss. Root miss, mit and miss mean send. Amy was clear to find the culprit. The police officer... The message across the, sorry, Amy's, Amy's was clear to find the culprit. Her mission was clear to find the culprit. The police officer, the message across the radio to the sheriff. The police officer transmitted the message across the radio to the sheriff. A, Matt, Amy's suggestion with a shrug. Matt dismissed Amy's suggestion with a shrug. Your assessment for today is to write a letter to the sheriff explaining Amy's plan and why it is a good idea, good way of identifying the culprit. Remember, the sheriff is not a chemistry expert, so you're going to have to help him understand your plan. So this is the setup that we have that has been provided. So the physical change um, matter Amy uses, she's going to use a bowl of ice cubes. What will happen? Well, it will melt, meaning it will change state of solid to liquid. And why is this um, why is this a physical or chemical change? The changes of state are physical changes. They are reversible and the kind of matter remains the same. Why does this catch the thief? The water will mean that the soles of the thief's shoes will get wet so they will stick to other things the thief stepped on. Why is this objective evidence? Only someone who walks into the lab with pla will have plaster of Paris on their shoes. There is no opinion on the person, just evidence of what the action will look like. So this is, goes for both the chemical and physical change. The physical or the chemical change is plaster of Paris. It will undergo a chemical change when it encounters water. It's not reversible. It gives off heat and it turns into a different form of matter. When the water on the shoe encounters a plaster of Paris, a reaction will take and harden the plaster will stick to the bottom of the shoes. You have to explain this plan to the sheriff in simpler terms because if you explain it in chemical and physical chains, it's a little bit harder to understand. You need to explain what those are in order for them to understand what your plan is. And that is the end of today's lesson. We will see everyone in our next one.